There's nothing worse than a soggy ending when it comes to storytelling. Whether listening around a campfire to a tale of horror, in a cinema watching the latest blockbuster, or simply reading a book, if the ending doesn't stick the landing and hobbles off, then it can feel like a huge waste of your time and your emotions. However, things get even worse when it comes to comic books or any medium that's serialized, as in these instances we might not even get an ending, as series, arcs, and lines can just be pulled without warning. And this can be for a myriad of reasons. Cancellations, artists walking, scheduling conflicts, and some never even make it to the stands in the first place. So today we're going to look at some of the more notable examples of stories that never got to be told and take a look at a worrying issue within the industry that unfortunately isn't providing any more security for arcs as we advance in years. With this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are seven comic book story arcs that were never finished and why. Number 7. Rick Veitch's Swamp Thing Swamp Thing was Vertigo's darling to the 80s and 90s, and for good reason. Alan Moore had done amazing things on the character alongside a number of artists, amongst them Rich Veitch. Veitch would later take the reins on Swamp Thing as a writer, but it all came to an abrupt close when he decided that Jesus Christ himself would appear in the book's 88th issue. No, I'm not kidding. Now, DC, specifically editor Jeanette Kahn, in what was admittedly an out-of-character move for the then-president of the publisher, was apparently anxious that the publication of the issue could trigger a religious backlash due to concerns over blasphemy, and so it was decided that it wouldn't be published. Veitch promptly departed the series and DC as a whole, justifiably vexed that the publisher had stifled his creative freedom. Now, gods are commonplace in the superhero verse, so maybe Jesus slinging mud with the Bayou Behemoth would have been brilliant, yet we'll never know as Veitch never got the opportunity to finish this arc. The reins instead were handed to Doug Wheeler, who took the series in a decidedly different direction thereafter. Number 6. The Crew so, to begin with, Tana E. C. Coates has been turning in some brilliant tales over at the House of Ideas. From Black Panther to Captain America, Coates's comics always find a way to be politically intriguing, socially conscious, and utterly utterly gripping. Black Panther and The Crew, a comic co-written alongside Yona Harvey, was no exception, but strangely it only lasted two issues before it was cancelled, meaning that both writers and artist Butch Geese were only able to wrap up the first arc, which totaled six issues altogether. By all accounts, Coates and Harvey were able to finish a story, but it wasn't the whole story. The crew had so much potential and it was evident that there was a lot more in the pipeline. Sadly, Marvel were left unconvinced by the comic sales, and killed it off before contemplating how well the book could have performed in trade paperback collections. Even more frustrating is that Marvel barely promoted the comic before its release, which is an unfortunately familiar issue that's vexed multiple creators, with some even having to finance promotion from their own pockets. Number 5. Daredevil and Bullseye – The Target Kevin Smith has a bit of a habit of not finishing comics, which is honestly a shame given his work on Green Arrow, Daredevil, and The Green Hornet, all of which have been well received. But it's a sad reality that the Fat Man on Batman host, great podcast by the way, hasn't always managed to steer a comic to its actual conclusion. Case in point, Daredevil and Bullseye, The Target. Here, Smith had previously helmed a compelling story based on the man without fear in Daredevil, Guardian Devil, which was drawn by Joe Quesada but the character was in the hands of a new creative team now. Brian Bendis and Alex Maleev were in the midst of what would later prove to be a seminal run on the character, one that impacted Matt Murdock for over a decade after they left the series. Still, Smith persisted with his Daredevil book, and at first it looked great. Artist Glenn Fabry was in handling art duties throughout the entire arc, but only one issue was ever published in November 2002. Weeks, months, and then years passed with no word on when a second issue was meant to drop. And after this, updates on the target have been few and far between. The project is unlikely to materialize at this stage, with Smith having since gone on the record to claim that he was personally dissatisfied by the first issue, which he'd rushed into production to ensure that he could use Bullseye before he then appeared in the Bendis and Malie run. CBR later revealed that the target in question was going to be, drumroll please, Captain America. Oh, what could have been, eh? Number 4. Grant Morrison and Jim Lee's Wildcats 
Wildcats is one of those quintessential 90s properties that's impossible not to love. I mean, seriously, the title is class. The characters look like G.I. Joe designs, cranked up to 11, and they've got personalities to match. But Wildcats has been through the absolute ringer since its inception. Originally conceived by Marvel, Image, and later DC superstar artist Jim Lee alongside Brandon Choi, Wildcats started off at Image Comics before moving to Wildstorm. Lee and Choi's property was then acquired by DC Comics, and various elements from the comics have even been incorporated into the mainstream DCU since, with Grifter having seen repeated success in the DCU. Frustratingly for fans of Grifter, Zealot, and all of the others, multiple revivals of the comic haven't lasted long, meeting cancellation either before or after the first issue was able to hit the stands. Undoubtedly, the most promising of these revivals was one that involved the team's co-creator Jim Lee teaming up with Grant Morrison for a planned 12-issue run. However, that only lasted one issue before succumbing to multiple delays and later cancellation, and Wildcats fans haven't really recovered since. To rub even more salt in the wound, Morrison has previously gone on the record to discuss what exactly the rest of the issues would have been about, stating that the comic would have pitted the team against an antagonist in the mold of, get this, Margaret Thatcher. God, I wish we had that. Number 3. All-Star Batman and Robin now, of course, not every cancelled comic is necessarily a major loss. Some titles just don't quite cut the mustard, and one that most certainly did not involved a creative team that should have, on paper, been about as dynamic as the duo that they were depicting. I am, of course, referring to All-Star Batman and Robin, The Boy Wonder. It's a comic so infamous, so batch weird, and so, so mean-spirited that it's actually become a meme in itself. Here, Batman neglects his adopted ward, leaving him to face for himself in the Batcave to eat rats and bats that live there, and if that blatant child abuse wasn't bad enough, him and Black Canary decide to get it on in the rain after burning a dozen or so mobsters alive in an explosion by the Gotham Docks. Yeah, it's that kind of Miller comic. Anyway, All-Star Batman and Robin wasn't meant to be the only title in that line of comics. Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly also helmed a brilliant story under that banner in All-Star Superman, while other projects headed up by the likes of Adam Hughes, All-Star Wonder Woman, Jeff Johns, All-Star Batgirl, and others were also optioned. Naturally, a sequel to The Boy Wonder was also planned, with the first issues having set up the Joker to appear as the central antagonist, and for Batgirl to presumably have joined the team after her brief cameo at some point. A sequel sequel titled Dark Knight Boy Wonder was also announced in 2010, but nothing ended up materialising. Number 2. W. Hayden Blackman and J. H. William III's Batwoman Batwoman was one of the greatest comic book characters introduced over the last two decades, and naturally when you're that good a character, you tend to have a couple of good comics to answer for that reputation. In Kate Kane's case, those came in 2009 and 2011 respectively, with Greg Rucker and J. H. Williams III presiding over a standout Batwoman story in the pages of Detective Comics. Before Williams then teamed up with W. Hayden Blackman for a series to line up with the DC's new 52 reboot. Rucker set the wheels in motion, and it's with this in mind that Blackman and Williams were able to craft what was at the time the publisher's best bat book. It was smart, character-driven, and pretty much vital. Kane was one of only few openly gay superheroes, and her relationship with Gotham cop Maggie Sawyer became a major element of the book, to the point that, in what would eventually prove to be the series' final arc, Kate proposed. The stage was set for another famous comic book wedding, but then DC demanded that the creators call off the marriage, a decision rationalised because supposedly superheroes just aren't allowed to get married anymore. It's strange that they had a ton of weddings before that in comics, and some of the best superheroes do obviously have partners. It's a very odd move, and it didn't sit well with the fans, nor with the creators, who then decided to leave the arc altogether after these changes. Elements of Blackman and Williams' planned arc were wrapped up months later, but not in the way that they had planned. And number one, The Last Galactus Story. John Byrne and Terry Austin's The Last Galactus story is one of the most bizarre examples on this list, mainly because it was cancelled out of the blue and no efforts to assemble the final unpublished issues have been made since. The Last Galactus story does exactly what it says on the tin. The devourer of worlds, aided at this time by Harold Frankie Ray, aka Nova, finds himself investigating a trail of destruction across the cosmos. Entire galaxies have been wiped from existence and the duo set on a path to the centre of the universe to figure out why. 
It's exactly that kind of epic, cosmic storytelling that fans love to see from Marvel, and the story was published as part of Epic Illustrated, but with sales of the book diminishing, Marvel pulled the plug. By this point, nine chapters of the last Galactus story had been published, which meant that fans were left high and dry in regards to getting some much-needed closure, and that is still the case today. So, why did the last Galactus story never see completion? Well, according to Marvel Comics of the 1980s, it was down to a number of factors. First, the aforementioned cancellation of Epic Illustrated. Second, because the efforts to work the story into the last Fantastic Four story were unsuccessful. And lastly, because Byrne ended his partnership with Marvel following the cancellation of X-Men Hidden Years. Though it's not much consolation, Byrne has detailed what his plans would have been for the last few issues in a conversation with CBR back in 2000. It all sounds incredibly epic, possibly even too epic for Marvel's Epic Illustrated. And there we go, those were seven comic book story arcs that were never finished and why. I hope that you enjoyed that, my friends, and please let me know of any others that you would have included on this list down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules, so you can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero on Twitter. As always, you have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.